Our Father, our God, how, how we thank you for this day, for this study time, for this Sunday school hour. Bless us now as we come, as we look into your word. Help us to apply your word according to our living. Bless us now. Open our hearts, our minds that we might be receptive to your word in Jesus' name, amen, amen. We bring you greetings, St. Matthew Church. Today, this is our Sunday school hour. We'll come uh, to study this morning, our Sunday school time from, uh, from Zechariah. Chapter 8 will be our study for our Sunday, Sunday school hour this morning. Zechariah chapter 8, our subject, uh, New Day is Coming. Our printed text, uh, chapter 8, verses 1 through 8, and verses 11 through 17. Uh, a new day is, is, is coming. Our first outline uh, uh, deals with the subject again, uh, verses uh, 1 through 8. Let me just read for you a couple of verses from this first outline of uh, Zechariah chapter 8, beginning at verse 1. And again, the word of the Lord hosts came saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, I was jealous for Zion with great jealousy, and I was jealous for her with great fury. Thus says the Lord, I am returned unto Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth uh, and the mountain of the Lord of hosts the holy mountain. Like Jeremiah and Ezekiel, Zechariah was also a priest. According to traditions, he, he, he was a member of the great synagogue, a council of 120, originated by Jeremiah and presided over by, by Israel. His name means the Lord remembers. He, he was born in Babylonian captivity and his name speaks volume that the Lord has not forgotten his people. Zechariah opens, opening words are dated from 520 BC, the second year of Darius. Persian Emperor Cyrus had died. Babylonian captivity is over. Now 70 years has been passed. Again in verses 1, the sins of Zion Israel were, were her worst enemies. Yet in this chapter the Lord seemed to comfort Israel in spite of in spite of her ways, in spite of her actions, the Lord seems to comfort Israel. The Lord speaks through his prophet, thus says the Lord of hosts, 
I am zealous for Zion with great zeal, with great fervor. I am zealous for her. This is strong language expressed by God. The idea is that he is not, he is not pleased, he is not comfortable with the estrangement of his chosen people. Their sins had separated them from God and God was not comfortable with his people being separated from him. Nor can he, he tolerate their sins, nor can he tolerate the enemies of Israel, his chosen people. God shows Israel. Yes, Babylon in all her great power, Babylon had fallen. Notice, notice that word zealous, jealous, jealous here uh, was God's resentment against his people for their disloyalty and their misbehavior toward him. He had stated, thou shalt have no other God before me. He had stated he, that he was a jealous God. We, we read it in Exodus, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Nothing, no one should separate his people from him, not even their sins. Yeah, yeah. Remember, he had raised this nation in bondage in Egypt, yeah. and God had cared for Israel. First John 1 8 is very clear. If we confess our sins, we if we say we have no sins, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Confession of sin, repentance of sin leaps out on the pages of the Bible. God is never pleased with man's sin. Notice, notice, notice that word Zion. It is the mountain on which ancient Jerusalem was built, which became a name for the city. It was called the city of Zion. Yeah, yeah. Verse 3, let me read it aloud again. Verse 3, I want to read it again. Thus says the Lord, I, I am returned unto Zion and I will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem and Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Oh, when Jerusalem was taken and given over to the enemy, the Babylonians. God seemed to have deserted her, but now the restoration of the exiles, the rebuilding of the temple, the voice of the prophet shows that the Lord has returned and now he will be in the midst of Jerusalem. He will be in the midst of his people. Seventy years has passed in captivity and now God brings his people back to the city of Zion, back to the city of truth. He has brought his people back, restoration. He is about to raise up his people again. The mountain of the Lord of hosts, Zion, the holy mountain, the hill whereon the temple is built, the holy mountain because the Lord will dwell there in the sanctuary. God will dwell in the midst of his people. What a beautiful picture. What a beautiful picture. After all that Israel has been through, after all that God has done for Israel, he has preserved them even in captivity. And now, and now he says, he says, he says, I, I, I will be in your midst. I will bring you back to Zion. I will dwell in the sanctuary. I will be in your midst. What a beautiful picture of a gracious God. What a beautiful picture of a long-suffering God. I, I see grace even here in, in the Old Testament that God, God gives us what we don't really deserve. Listen to the listen to the prophet in verse 4. Listen to the prophet. He says, thus says the Lord of hosts. Watch what he says. He says, old men and old women shall again sit in the streets of Jerusalem. Each one with his staff in his hand because of great age. 
This is a picture of, of happiness. This, this is a picture of, of, of happiness, a, a picture of security, a picture without worry. Old men, old women can sit in peace and in harmony in the holy city once again. Such promises are made in the messianic times. Isaiah 65, 20 says, There shall be no more thence an infinite of days, nor an old man that has not filled his days, for the child shall die at a hundred years old. But the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. Verse 5 of the lesson, verse 5. And, and, and the streets of the city, watch what God promised, shall be full of boys and girls. And look what the Bible says, playing in the streets thereof. Yes. Again, Jerusalem, a Jerusalem will flourish. Yes. Sometimes we miss the picture how, how Nebuchadnezzar, how they destroyed Jerusalem when they took captives and marched off prior to 70 years. They tore down the walls. They destroyed Jerusalem. Yeah. But God says, now, now, Jerusalem yeah. will flourish, will prosper yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. Isaiah says she, ha he, she has received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Yeah. Israel has paid her dues. Yeah. And the Lord says, the city of Jerusalem shall prosper shall flourish again. God has deemed it to be so full. He says this city will be full of life. Get the picture. Old men sitting around, old women sitting around, children shattering, shattering and dancing in the streets. Life will come to Jerusalem again. Jerusalem will be populated again once more by the people of God. Not only, not only, not only will the people dwell there, but, but the Bible is very clear that God will be in their midst. Yeah, yeah. That's the beauty, that's the beauty, that's the beauty of Jerusalem, the holy city, is that God is always in the midst of his people. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me read verses 6, 7, and 8. Uh, verse, verse 6 says, verse 6 says, uh, 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 verse 6 says, uh, Thus says the Lord of hosts, If it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in, in these days, should it also be marvelous in mine eyes, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 7, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country. Verse 8, And I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. Yeah. These are God's promises. These are promises of, of God. The, God makes these promises. And, and his promises, watch this. Are a man and a man. His promises never fail. They are a reality when they are spoken. He says, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country. God says, I will save my people. If God promises to save his people, then God is able to save his people people. He said, I will bring them and they shall dwell in the midst of in the midst of Jerusalem. The center of worship. This is the center of worship. If you remember, if you remember Samaria tried to duplicate what we, they had in Jerusalem and it was, it was impossible to duplicate what they had in Jerusalem because Jerusalem is Zion. It's the city of God and it is the center of, of worship. 
you remember, you remember some of the psalmists, they, they would go up to Jerusalem to worship. And they would come from all over to Jerusalem. And there they would go to the city of Zion to worship God. Now, 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 if they be, if they be faithful unto God, watch this, y'all. He will keep his promise. You got to get this. You got to get this. He's bringing them back. He's bringing them back. He's bringing them back. He's bringing them back to their homeland. They've served their time in Babylon. It hadn't looked good. Folk have poked fun of them. Folk have misused his people. Now he brings them back. He promises them prosperity. And he says, he says, if you, if you are faithful to me, he said, I'll keep my promise. Y'all in here with me? He says, he says, you got to be Israel. You, you've learned your lesson. You've seen what your forefathers went through. You've learned your lesson. You got to get, 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 get the text because our, our prophet is born in captivity. Yeah, yeah. That means he's never seen Jerusalem. Yeah. That means he's only heard about the holy city. So he says, now when I bring you back, yeah. you got to be faithful unto me. In order for me to keep my promise, you got to be faithful to me. And that, that, still, that still applies today, my brothers and sisters. If you're going to serve God, if you're going to live for God, if you're going to reap the blessings of God, you must be faithful unto him. Watch the second outline. Second outline. Speak the truth, verses 11, uh, 11 through, uh, verses 11 through 17, and it, and it says, speak, speak the truth. Just briefly, we'll peep at that, and we'll finish off our, our Sunday school lesson. Let me read just, for, let me read a couple of verses here. Verse 11 says, uh, but now I, I will not be unto the residue of this people, as in the former days, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 12, for the seed shall be prosperous. The vine shall give her fruit. And the ground shall give her increase. And the heavens shall give their due. And I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these things. Verse 13, and it shall come to pass that as, as ye were a curse among the heathens, O house of Judah, and house of Israel, so will I save you, and ye shall be a blessing. Fear not, but let your hands be strong. Yeah, yeah. Verses 11 and 12. God's aim is to bless his people. You got to get that. You got to get that. There's no way you can serve God and, and belong to God and then your God dare not bless you. Amen. You know, if the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, I ought to have a, just a little bit. He's, yeah. he's my father. Yeah. He, he provides for his children. So I ought to have just a little bit. So God, God aim is, God's aim is to bless his people. The curse is over. They have suffered enough. There is a new relationship in the plan of God. God has something new planned. He has a new relationship. This, this, this younger group, this young generation that has come out of captivity, God has new plans for them. Y'all, I got to get through. But listen, you remember the old group that spent 40 years in the wilderness? You remember the old group that came out of the wilderness yeah. and dwelt in the promised land yeah. but forgot about the God that brought them? Yeah. Now he says to this new group, he gives a new relationship. God is gracious, yeah. but sin must be punished. Yeah. Yeah. Let me do that again. Let me do that again. God is gracious. He is kind, he is long-suffering, but sin must be punished. Yeah. The land will be blessed. 
uh, uh, watch what the text says. Crops will grow. Did y'all see that? That means he's in control of everything. Seeds sown, plants will, will not be sown in vain. No, no enemies will destroy the land and crops. There shall be peace and joy. Don't that sound like he's in control? The ground shall be fertile. <laughs> Even without fertile land. The ground shall be fertile. And the heavens shall give dew. So the crops can grow. Y'all with me today? Can, let, let me read this again. Let me read this just one more time. Verse, 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 verse 13. And it shall come to pass that as ye were cursed among the heathen, O house of Je Je Judah and house of Israel, so will I save you, and ye shall be a blessing. Uh, fear not, but let your hands be strong. Yes. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, as I thought to punish you, when your fathers provoked me to wrath, says the Lord of hosts, and I repented not. Watch what verse 15 said. So again, I have sought in these days to do well unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. He says, fear ye not. You got you to get the picture. Get the picture. From curses to blessings. <laughs> from, from curses to the blessings based on the goodness of God. You got to get this. Not, not so much the performance of the people, although they are called to live right, but this is based on the goodness of God. What, what, would, what would we be without the grace and the mercy of God? Where would we be without God's goodness this morning? Where would we be if he judged us fairly? Israel was much like we are today. They, they, had, they, had, they had done nothing to deserve God's blessing. When men repent, he is willing to forgive. Watch this, y'all. Forget and restore relationship. Y'all in here with me? He doesn't bring it up again. Grandma said he cast it in the sea of forgiveness where it never rise against us again in yonder's judgment. He does not hold this new generation accountable for their father's sins. Verse 15 is clear. It's clear. God's desire is to bless Jerusalem and the house of Judah. Watch this, y'all. You got to get it. All God wants to do yeah, yeah. is to bless his people yeah. where other nations can see their blessings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His people are to be a testimony yeah. of the goodness of our God. Yeah. Can I read verse 16 and 17? 16 and 17, real loud, and I'm through. Uh, uh, these are the things that ye shall do. Watch, watch this real close. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor. Execute judgment of truth and peace in your gates. And let none of your, your let, let none of your, you, let none of you, you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor. And love no false oath. For all these are things that I hate, says the Lord. I'm through. This, this is how Israel is required to live. Catch it. In order to receive the blessings of God. God gives an accurate description of his requirements to receive his blessings. This is how they are to live. If they are to prosper in the land, God will bless their crops. Yeah. Yeah. He'll give them the right rain. He'll, he'll raise their crops. He will bless their children. He will bless them. They have to live according to his design. Yeah. Yeah. 
They must do the will of God. His promises here are conditional. And that's where some of his covenants are. His covenants are some are non-conditional, some are conditional. God says, if you do this, I'll do that based on condition. And sometimes non-conditional, he said, I'm just going to bless you. There would be no deceiving of one another. Y'all see that? That means you, you, know, you don't trick me, you don't take advantage of me, you don't, you don't work me for low income. You, uh, uh, that, there would be no deceiving yeah. of one another. Practice perfect equity in judgment. Be fair, be impartial. If he's guilty, of a crime and I'm guilty of the same crime the same judgment should be applied to both yeah, yeah, yeah. says be fair according to justice do secure peace yeah. and what he's saying is where there is justice there you will have peace he says peace and concord between parties. Justice must be, must be ad administered fairly, properly. And when justice is fairly and properly, he says you can have peace in the land. Yeah. So in closing this morning of our Sunday school lesson, God can only bless us when we live according to his word. Yeah. God. I need to say that again. Can only bless us when we live according to his word. And his word says, love ye one another as I have loved you. He blesses us according to how we bless and how we live with others. And amen and amen and amen. Thank God for our Sunday school uh, our this morning, our Sunday school lesson. Pray that you've been blessed by this uh, prophetic lesson from uh, Zechariah, God's prophet uh, from the ancient days. May God bless you. May he keep you is our prayer. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> we thank Pastor Alexander for that Sunday school lesson. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. I'll be reading from Ephesians 2. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversations in the time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins hath quickened us together with Christ by grace ye have been saved shall we pray Lord how we thank you how we love you for this another day for all of your many blessings for life health and strength your goodness your kindness and your mercy For Lord we realize that we are unworthy so we pause to say thank you Lord, now as we come to offer praise and worship, we ask that you would be pleased. We ask that you would use us in such a way that it might bring you glory, that those that don't know you might come to know you. Let your word ring out afresh, that the hearts of sinners might be convicted that those who have slipped away from you might come back even closer. That those who are with you might be on fire to share this gospel about a man named Jesus that came to die that we might live. 
how we love you and how we thank you. These are our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. so good Lord you are good you've been better than good I can't praise you enough I owe you my life I can't praise you enough even if I try cause you've been so good you've been so good Lord you've been so good to me Lord you are good Lord you are good
better than good to me. You've been better. You've been better than good to me. You've been better. You've been better than good to me. You've been better. Certainly not only has he been good, but he is good right now. If you breathe and if you're, if you're in your right mind, he's good right now. Dear God and Heavenly Father, we thank you now. God, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you now for what you're about to do. God, we pray that you will have your way, not just in me, but with me and through me. God, use me as an oracle of your word. To speak a word to someone that needs to hear, not from me, but from you. God, if urban speak, no one will be helped. But if you speak, lives will be changed. Hearts will be unhardened. And our lives will never be the same again. So, Father, I ask that you allow me to decrease, that you may increase. And it's in the precious name of your beloved Son and my Savior that we pray and ask it all. Thank God. Amen. Certainly we appreciate my pastor for an opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk that God has appointed him to him. Amen. Praise the Lord. I count it a privilege as well as an honor, and I do not take it lightly. Amen. We have a bunch of preachers here, and all of them are very capable and able, amen, of doing what we do according to the teachings that we've had. But certainly I thank God for every chance he gives to me. Because see, the fact of the matter is we can preach the word, but if we don't do the word ourselves, preaching helps someone else and we're not getting anywhere at all. Amen. So I've learned to be first partaker of what I preach. I was talking to Love and I said, Love, and I get up there, I'm, I'm nervous as a jackrabbit. Amen. And, and the reason I'm so nervous is because I don't want to say anything before God's people. Because if you speak the word and whatever you say, they do what you say, you're responsible for them. Pastor is the pastor, but what comes out of your mouth when you're up <laughs> is on you, not on the pastor. Amen. But we thank God for what he is doing in my life. Amen. I can't testify for anyone else, but I can testify for me. Amen. May not be where I should be, Kim, but thank God I'm a long way from where I used to be. Amen. Some folks already made it. I'm still getting there. If you would, please, very quickly, I won't be before you long. I know we have other things to do, amen, so I will not trouble you long. Matter of fact, Kim, if you'll put the clock on me, amen, give me 25 and a half minutes. And, and while I'm here, if you pray, 
yes. we'll do this. Amen. Yes. The Bible declares over in the book of Acts, ninth chapter. beginning with the first verse and Luke the doctor the physician declares and Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way whether they were men or women he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Yeah, yeah. Amen. And if you would, please just give me a few minutes to use as a text or as a thought. When religion goes too far. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. When religion... Yeah goes too far now you you do know Saul was was religious amen amen you know it wasn't like he was just out there doing stuff and he didn't have an idea of what he was doing it didn't have any reason to do what he was doing but the Bible says he had gone to the priest to get a letter to do what he do can I can I introduce you to to brother Saul I, I know we wait until he get to be Paul before we acknowledge him being anything but can I can I introduce you to brother brother Saul Amen. Before I get to my sermon, Saul, the persecutor, his name in Hebrew was Saul, meaning desired. His Roman name was Paul, meaning little. He was born in Tarsus, the city of Cilicia, a free city of the Romans, and himself a free man of that city. His father and mother were both native Jews. Therefore, he calls himself a Hebrew of the Hebrews. He was of the tribe of Benjamin. Uh -huh. His education was in the schools of Tarsus, first which was a little Athens for learning. Then he was sent to Jerusalem to study divinity in the Jewish law. And, and therein lies, lies one of the problems right there. <laughs> he, he went to study the law. Amen. It's like the scripture that says the letter kill it, but the spirit give it life. Saul was very familiar with the law. Amen. He, he, was, he was studied in the law. Yeah. He, he knew the law. Yeah. Amen. From a child, he was brought up under yeah. the Jewish law. Amen. He has done his divinity training. Amen. He had been under some of the greatest teachers. As a matter of fact, his tutor was Gamaliel, which means reward of God. And he had extraordinary natural parts. In other words, he was good at what he was yeah, doing. Yeah, Amen. He, he wasn't confused. He, he, he was good. Amen. He had practiced. He had done this for a while. You know, it wasn't his first rodeo, in other words. Amen. So he was good at what he was doing. He was an inveterate enemy to Christian anity. In other words, he was a confirmed enemy against Christians. Now, he was okay with church folks, you know, because church folks was like he were. They were confused. But he was an enemy to Christians. Amen. And, and, and some, some of us sitting out here now, we, we're an enemy to Christians. Amen. We've gone to church 30, 40 years. We've been in the way for a long time. We, we do a lot of stuff that we think makes sense and it's actually nonsense to God. Amen. But we feel like we are right. <laughs> Saul was an enemy to Christians. Now, you do know there's a difference between Christians and church folks, right? Amen. Christians are Christ-like, you know, amen. They, they save like Jesus was. Church folks are just perpetrators. Amen. They sit around to see whether or not you came to church today, what you had on, how much money you gave in the offering. God forbid if they get past you at the same time you're writing your envelope. There's something about them eyes. They can see what zeros are on there, what zeros are not on there. Amen. Even though they didn't give anything themselves. So, you know, there is a difference between, we got a bunch of church folks. Amen. You look at some of these mega churches, and I'm going to get back to my text, but you look at some of these mega churches that's got 25 or 30,000 people, and you wonder, Rem South, how many of them are Christians and how many of them are church folks? Amen. I, I can't imagine you actually being a Christian if everything you hear all the time is about prosperity or the best day of your life. 
Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Write a book. Get rich. Somebody will buy it. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So we have to wonder sometimes if everybody is in church. And I ain't being nosy, but, you know, sometimes you have to wonder if everybody in church really loved the Lord. Because the Bible says if you love him, you'll keep his commandments. And his commandments aren't grievous. They're not hard. Amen. So when I find folks that's in church and they say, man, it is hard living this way. Praise the Lord. You know, the Lord delivered me, but I'm struggling <laughs> to get through. Well, I don't know about all that. The Lord delivered me from crack cocaine 30 years ago, and I ain't struggling. I don't even know where the crack houses are, so when I pass by them, I don't have an issue with it. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I, I'm just I under, the, under the impression, Junior, that if you're struggling, you haven't given it up. Yeah. Amen. Because the Bible says when we're delivered, yeah. we're delivered. Yeah. Amen. God doesn't halfway do. God don't have a 12-step program. That's AAA. Don't get it confused. Yeah. God has a one-step program. Yeah. Amen. You take a step, come to him, yeah. you're the preacher, your hand in the heart to him, and, and it's a done deal. Yeah. He will save you from your sin. Yeah, man, you're right. Amen. Let me, let me get back to my text. He was an invert enemy to Christianity. In other respects, he was well enough as touching the righteousness, which is of the law, blameless, a man of no ill morals, but a persecutor of Christians. Yeah. Yeah. And so ill informed was his conscience that he thought he did good God's service. Uh -huh. Amen. It's not like Paul was this, this, this fool. This crazy person that just decided one day that this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm going to make this be my lifelong goal is to persecute the church. Now, Paul actually thought he was doing the right thing. Yeah. One portion of the scripture say they were doing and worshiping God, but without knowledge of God. Yeah. Some, some scriptures say they had a zeal yeah. of God, yeah. but not according to knowledge. Yeah. Amen. In other words, he loved the Lord. And thank God when we, when we love the Lord, he doesn't judge us a lot of times according yeah. to what we do. Yeah in this flesh. Yeah. Amen. But he judges the heart. Yeah. Glory to God, because if he had not judged the heart, King David would have never made it. Yeah, the Bible says David was a man after God's own heart. Yeah. But you know the story. David cheated with Bathsheba. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He killed her husband. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You know, he, he fathered other kids out of wedding. You know, David was David. Yeah. But the Bible says he was a man after God. Now, we'd have wrote David off. David would have been in hell if we'd have had anything to do with it. Amen. No way in the world he would have made it to heaven. You know, this boy here, he's just a mess. It's a hot mess. We would have thrown shade all over him. Amen. But when God judges us, he does not judge us according to this flesh. And, and certainly I thank God for that. Amen. Because the neighborhood that I came from, some of them still call me what they used to call me, but I ain't that no more. Amen. Thank God for restoration and transformation. Praise the Lord. He restored me and transformed me to who I am today. Yeah. Glory to God. And I would be the last one to tell you that I'm perfect because he called me to preach. Yeah. Amen. I ain't struggling and I ain't straining, but I'm striving to get to where God would call me to be. And he called me to perfection. I believe when I hit perfection, he'll get me up out of here. Because yeah. this world that we live in now is in a mess. Yeah. Praise the Lord. But he, his conscience, he thought he did good service. Yeah. Yeah. In it, when religion goes too far. Yeah. Amen. He was religious. Yeah. He was a religious individual. Yeah. But when religion goes too far. Yeah. Yeah, amen. amen. It, it went as far as him standing, being a witness. Yeah. You remember, Stephen, amen, when the apostles had work that they had to yeah. do and yeah. they had gotten so caught up and had gotten so busy that they weren't able to take care of the daily business, daily ministration that was going on. Yeah. Amen. They were busy in the word and ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So what they had to do, the Bible said they told the people to choose them seven individuals. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That were full of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Glory to God that would be able to handle the business of ministering to the people in a natural mean. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So what they did was they, they chose one named Stephen. You know the story, Stephen, Stephen, the one that told them, folks, you yeah. stiff-necked, hard-hearted, uncircumcised individuals, yeah. you do always resist the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. But when Stephen came to the end of his life, yeah. the Bible says he was talking to these church folks. Yeah. yeah, and these church folks decided that they didn't want to hear what he had to say because yeah. apparently 
He wasn't telling him the best day of your life. <laughs> just, just do all you can. <laughs> Amen. He was telling him that if you don't get it right with the Lord, you will open your eyes in hell. So the Bible says that Stephen was standing there preaching. It takes a lot to preach to folks that don't want to hear you preach. Amen. But the Bible says as he was standing there preaching, so they began to run up on him and chew on him. Can you imagine church folks eating you while you preach? <laughs> we, we get upset because folks don't want to hear us, but you know, ain't nobody trying to chew on us, Tasha. Amen. But the Bible says while he was yet preaching, they began to chew on him. Glory to God, and as if that wasn't good enough, I guess he started preaching just a little bit harder. And the Bible says they all ran up on him and began to stone him. But there was a young man standing there witnessing all this that was going on. And his name was Brother Saul. Amen. The Bible said that they dropped his clothes, his jacket down at Saul's feet. So this wasn't the first time Saul had been involved in a situation that dealt with church folks as well as Christians. Amen. So Saul goes on, that's the seventh chapter, but when you get to the ninth chapter, yeah. it says Saul is on his way yeah. to persecute the church of God. Yeah. Yeah. How many of you know you, it's, it's hard to kick against the prick? Yeah. It's hard to come against people of God when God has them in his hand. Yeah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, touch not, I love that yeah. first lady, touch not my anointed yeah. and do my prophets no harm. So no hold on before you go jumping, before you go jumping to the conclusion now. Hold on, hold on. I know y'all done sit out there. Yeah, that's all. He's a terrible person. I don't know how he got to be Paul. <laughs> hold on. Do you remember? <laughs> Can you remember <laughs> when you were in them streets? Mm -hmm. Well, preacher, I ain't never been in the street. Well, do you remember? <laughs> Can you remember when you wasn't saved? Uh huh, and, and, and you had the religion of doing your own thing. Yeah. Yeah. I know some of y'all out there are too young, but Pastor can remember a song that said, It's your thing. Yeah. 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 Do what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. I can't tell you yeah. who to sock it to. Yeah. Then they say, It's your thing. Yeah. Yeah. Do what you want to do. Yeah. Uh huh, but look at here. <laughs> you might have thought it was your thing. But you God's thing. So your thing ain't your thing. It all belongs to God. So don't, don't, don't go to jumping on Saul and you know, throwing shade on Saul because he did what he thought was right. Because the Bible says a man is right in his own eyes. So a man's ways is right in his own eyes. So, but the end thereof are the ends of death. Praise the Lord. So we've all had this mind. As a matter of fact, Junior, Junior took my scripture when he read it. Praise the Lord. We're over in the book of, uh, I think it was Ephesians, wasn't it? Yeah. Amen. Say, so we were all dead yeah. in our sins and trespasses. Yeah. Say, so we have he quickened yeah. Yeah. who were sometimes dead in our sins and trespasses. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, what God is saying, ain't nobody better than nobody else. Yeah. Amen. He saved us all. Your morally goodness wasn't worth two cents with the Lord, my Jesus. Amen. Yeah. He did not care. Morally good people go to hell. Matter of fact, the road to hell is paved with good intentions and morally good people. Yeah. I intended to do the right thing. I intended to get saved, but I never got around to it. If I, I, I waited for one more day, then that one more day never came. Yeah. We have to understand that God is not inclined to work on our time schedule or our time frame. Yeah. We're inclined to work on his. Yeah. Amen. And whether you want to believe it or not, there's a time for everything. Yeah. Amen. I don't care how long you hang out in them streets and do your own thing. Yeah. Praise the Lord. There's a time that God has appointed yeah. for you to be saved. Yeah. Now, you can either be on time or you can miss that time. Yeah. Praise the Lord. But I'm afraid to say that if you miss that time, you may miss the Lord himself. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We can't go on in life the way we want to live. Yeah. Praise the Lord. There was a time when, you know, religion was very serious, First Lady. Amen. Going to church was a big thing. Especially for black folks. I don't, I don't know about white people. Amen. But for black people, going to church was a very important thing. Yeah. Amen. I, I can remember back in the days, in my little old young 67 years, I'm not that old, but I can remember back in the days when yeah. mom and them went to the fields. Amen. Pastor, and I was talking about them cotton sacks a few days ago. You know, back when you was a kid, you had a, had a pillowcase. Yeah. Uh -huh. And as you got older, Tasha, they extended that pillowcase. 
It went from a pillowcase to a croquet sack. Yeah, anybody know what I'm talking <laughs> Real laughing up here, you've been there. And then it went from a croquet sack to a big cotton sack. Yeah. Amen. And the more you pick, the more you made, yeah. which really wasn't very much. Amen. We ain't talking dollars of dollars. We talking a dollar or something. Amen. But, you know, that was where they spent their lives making their living in the cotton field. Yeah. Amen. But them old folks had a thing where when they come out of them fields, even while they was in the fields, Praise the Lord. They'd always strike up a song of some kind. You know, I love the Lord. He heard my prayer. <laughs> Pitted by every groan. Long as I live in trouble rise, I'll hasten to his throne. They couldn't wait to get out the fields in order to get to church. Amen. And now if you don't have great entertainment, a great choir, a lot of musicians playing, you can't hardly get folks to come to church. Amen. But if you can entertain them when they get there, glory to God, if you, if you do that for two or three years, you'll have to expand the building. But if when they get here, if you preach that you, if you don't get it right, you ain't going to make it. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Your crowd is not going to be buzzing out the doors. Yeah. Amen. But you will get your reward in heaven. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I, I'm not working down here in order to be paid by anybody down here. Yeah. But I'm working to see my Savior. And when I see him, I don't want to be in the line that says depart from me. Yeah. But I want to be in the line that says well done. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. As I rush to a close, I, I, I know there's other occasions to where there were good intentions that went wrong. See, the problem with good intentions is when you allow the devil to run your good intentions, you never make it to what God would have you to do. Many of y'all are familiar with James Warren Jones, right? A preacher in late 1978, at the age of 47, led 918 people to death when religion has gone too far. Well, maybe you didn't catch that name. He's better known as Jim Jones in Jonestown, Guyana. <laughs> Amen. He led a lot of black folks. You know, it's, it's hard to imagine that a lot of black people left the United States and went to giant Jonestown, Guyana. Amen. And then to be there and this person tell you to drink this and you're going to die. But that's religion. <laughs> gone way too far. Amen. But it happens if you don't serve the true and living God. Amen. Martin Luther King said, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Praise the Lord. Well, maybe you know Vernon Wayne Howell. <laughs> Vernon Wayne Howell, a preacher who in 1993 caused the death of 79 people. I think about 30 something of them was kids. Yeah. Well, maybe you know him better as David Koresh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Who in 1993 yeah. Yeah. talked 79 people yeah. into staying with him in a place that they knew were going to be destroyed yeah. and burnt down. Because if the FBI come at you and you done defied them for 30, 51 days, most likely you ain't going to make it. Yeah. Yeah. You done embarrassed them. Amen. And you do not embarrass law enforcement yeah. and expect to make it. Yeah. That's a fight you will not win. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a sign of religion yeah. going way too far. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And, 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 and now you're saying, well, you know, I ain't got nothing to do with all that. And I don't know what you're talking about. Well, let's, let's bring it to a close. Yeah. The greatest sign of religion going way too far yeah. is when the Christian folks, the church folks, decided that your Lord and my Lord needed to be crucified. The Bible says they had taken him to Caiaphas. And after leaving Caiaphas, they took him to the judgment hall. Praise the Lord. But the Bible says they couldn't go in the judgment hall themselves because they didn't want to be condemned when they took the Lord's supper the next time. Amen. So you got these church folks that's taking a Christian to judgment, but they won't go. Praise the Lord. But the Bible tells me that Jesus, even while he was there, Glory to God, and he was being persecuted, I can imagine, talked about and put down. Yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord, and even his main man, Peter, done denied him and said, no, I don't know him. As a matter of fact, the Bible said Peter got so annoyed with them folks saying, wasn't you with him? Said Peter even cussed. Yeah. Amen. And you know, nowadays, if somebody cussing, they say they're a Christian, we done condemned them to hell already. Yeah. Praise the Lord, but cut your ear off fast, was aiming at your throat, but you moved and I hit your ear, Peter. Glory to God, denied his father. Yeah. Praise the Lord, but how many of you know, even in all of this, Jesus, our Savior, yeah. 
Jesus our example. The Bible says he never defended himself. They took him to Pontius Pilate and Pilate asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus says, so you say. Glory to God, Jesus never acknowledged whether or not he was anything that they asked him to be. Praise the Lord, but the Bible says that as Jesus went on through this trials and tribulations, I don't understand why Christians don't want to go through anything, but they want to be Christ-like. The Bible says, if you suffer with me, you'll reign with me. Glory to God. So I don't know about you, but I've learned that a little suffering in this life is not to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed when I get before my Father, which is in heaven. Hallelujah. So God is not only been good, he is good. The God that sent us his son, glory to God, to do what we needed to do. Yeah. The father of all fathers. Yeah. Glory to God, if I could just get you to understand yeah. that God is yet good yeah. and always will be. Yeah. Glory to God, all we need to do is yeah. serve him yeah. with gladness in our hearts. Yeah. I understand sometimes the way may get hard. Yeah. I understand sometimes the way may get dark. Yeah. Praise the Lord, but I learned that if I put my trust in the one that steals the water. If I put my trust in the one that walks on the sea. Praise the Lord. If I put my trust in the one that opened blind eyes. Glory to God. If I put my trust in the one that caused the lame to walk. And the dumb to talk. If I put my trust in the one that took my pastor. That I knew very well. Glory to God. That wanted to be an owner of a club. And turn him into the pastor of a church. Glory to God. That God that has no respect of person. Praise the Lord, the God that does all that we need him to do. Praise the Lord. So God would like for us to understand that everything Sunday may not be every day, it may not be Sunday. Glory to God. But if we keep walking and trusting in the Lord, praise the Lord. This Jesus, you know Jesus. Praise the Lord. The Bible says the one that carried a rugged cross up Calvary's hill, up to a hill called Golgotha. Praise the Lord to be crucified of them that didn't know him but who he was. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in all of that, he still didn't mumble a word. Praise the Lord. He went to where he needed to go. He did what he needed to do. Praise the Lord. So we have to learn that no matter what is happening in our lives, glory to God, we've got to do what God called us to do. You said, well, preacher, you know, religion has gone too far. How about right now? Glory to God. We sitting in church right now and have the folks at home because of religion that went too far. They got this folk, person up in the office that says he's saved. Praise the Lord. And him and the government, whether it be state, city, or national, has decided that we can't be in church because of something they fixed up in a lab. Glory to God. But we all got to suffer for what they did. Praise the Lord. Well, that's religion that's gone way too far. So I don't choose the religion of the world that we live in. I choose the religion of a true and a living God. Amen. I don't know whether or not you believe it or not. I don't know whether or not you've even thought about it, but Jesus is coming back. The Bible says, and he's coming as a thief in the night. And whether or not you're ready, he's coming. So you better be ready so you can go. This Jesus that we talks about, the Bible says they put him up on a rugged cross. Glory to God. They said they stretched him wide, hung him high. Glory to God. And I know you know for a fact that he did die. Glory to God, because if he had not died, we wouldn't be here right now. But if he would have stayed dead, we wouldn't be saved. So the Bible says he died on a Friday. Glory to God, stayed in the grave all day Friday. Glory to God, stayed in the grave all day Saturday. Stayed in the grave all day Saturday night. Praise the Lord. But old Baptist priest said early, bright and early Sunday morning. Say he got up with all power in his hand. Power to save power to deliver, power to make free, power to change your life forevermore. But one preacher said he kicked out the backside of the grave, stood up on Resurrection Mountain. This same Jesus that was a bloody mess on Friday became a redeeming Savior on Sunday morning. Glory to God. And he did what no one else could do. Glory to God. He saved all of us from the penalty of sin. Do you love him? Do you really know him? If you love him, say yeah. If you love him, say yeah. If you love him, say yeah. Amen. 
when religion has gone too far. Amen, amen. If you don't know this man named Jesus, this is your opportunity to get to know him. The Bible says, if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen, 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 amen. If you don't know him, you ought to get to know him. He'll turn your life around. Yeah, yeah, it's sure enough better on this side. Amen, amen. And with that in mind, if you don't know this man named Jesus and you need prayer, our prayer line is open 12 hours a day from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. That number is 972-322-4115. 972-322-4115. That's our prayer line. And so if you need prayer, call the prayer line. 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Amen. Amen. You want to come to know this man named Jesus. Amen. We want to thank you for taking time to tune in with us this morning, whether you are viewing by Boxcast, whether you're viewing by Facebook Live or YouTube. You might be on the website. We want to thank you for taking time to tune in. And if you are viewing through um, Facebook or Boxcast or YouTube, go and visit our website, stmatthewbchurch.org, stmatthewbchurch.org. There, if you feel led to give, you can give through Givelify, amen, whatever the Lord has laid on your heart. Now, the prayer line that I mentioned is for prayer, not counseling. However, if you do have a need for counseling, whatever that need might be, we have two able-bodied counselors, amen, available here at St. Matthew Baptist Church, Lancaster, Texas. Amen, 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 amen. Once again, we thank you for joining. Uh, we'll be back Wednesday night, 715. May God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Amen.